Now, uh, Matt, you wrote an opinion piece, which unsurprisingly I think you were able to write in your sleep because you've said it many times and it comes with absolute uh, uh, confidence and uh, common sense about the role of coal in energy future. If we want to have a manufacturing sector that is going to be returned or surge, it needs to have a reliable power network. There's only one, way, one bit of technology that's going to get us there anytime soon, and it's uh, the black stuff. Well, I think, Paul, we just need to uh, get real and choose the technologies that are going to deliver the cheapest power for us to guarantee those jobs. Uh, I think we've been conning ourselves over the past decade where we uh, seem to have felt we could have our cake and eat it too. Uh, we could have all this renewable energy. Uh, we could invest in types of power that are not on all the time uh, and still have lots of jobs and a, and a strong manufacturing industry. And it's a nice fairy tale, but like most fairy tales, is far, far from reality. Over the last decade, it's the first time on record First time on record that our manufacturing sector has declined over a 10 year period. And that should be a wake up call to all of us, especially now going into a new environment post uh, this coronavirus, where a major economic partner is threatening our economic security, uh, uh, where commodity markets are, are falling and they might be weak for some time. We've got to invest back in using our own resources. And the simple maths of this, are, it's very simple. Uh, gas is going to cost us about six bucks a gigajoule, that's a unit of energy. Our coal mines mine the stuff at about two to three dollars gigajoule. So you know, do the math. Choose what's cheapest. Now let's uh, let's talk about this Belt and Road nonsense in uh, in Victoria, where he's doubling down and apparently to criticise is somehow a conspiracy theory. Seriously.